Glad to know you're with us. The Knowledge for Development Unit of the International Center for Tax and Development Institute of Development Studies has decried the availability of a limited but growing body of literature on the gender effects of taxation. Most of the available studies are from the Global North and relate to details of direct personal income tax policies and indirect taxes, while from the Global South, there are few empirical studies that look at taxation through a gendered lens and they tend to focus on indirect taxes such as value-added tax and direct taxes such as small business taxes and or informal taxes and fees. Joining me is Varsha Singh, the head strategy Planning and International Cooperation, African Tax Administration Forum. Thank you for joining me today. Good afternoon, and thank you for having me on your show today. Thank you for joining us. Now, let's begin with the topic uh, of this conversation. There are two broad concepts here. You know, the first one talks about promoting balance in tax administration, while the other is gender equity and taxation. So I'd like us to begin with, you know, the first, which is balance in tax administration. What does this entail? So I think, firstly, if we look at uh, taxes, taxes are the largest and the most sustainable source of revenue for any government. And uh, looking at this, we need to have tax equity in a broad sense, which refers to having a fair and just tax system. Now, what that means is that you need to have the tax burden being distributed in a manner that is considered fair amongst its taxpayers. And we need to ensure from a tax administration point that we are collecting uh, the right taxes. And uh, this is important because if we look at uh, the way governments uh, develop and the way we have sustainability in terms of our development, taxes plays an important role. And that important role is that we need to have, firstly, I think foremost, most important, is there needs to be trust between the state and the citizens. So we need to make sure that the right taxes are being collected at from the right uh, from the right avenues. So, okay. from a tax administration perspective, in order to do this, tax administrations are the implementers of tax policy policies, and we need to have uh, you know tax administrations uh, that have the capacity in terms of the resources to be able to collect the uh, taxes. So on the one hand, you need to make sure that you, know, you have compliance, but on the other hand, where there's non-compliance, tax administrations need to ensure that they okay. have the right enforcement uh, capability to be able to go th to go after those transgressors. All right, Varsha, at let me come in here. Time, I think let me come in here, Varsha. I I'd like us to look at this also. There are those who would wonder if there is a correlation, you know, between gender equity and taxation. So I'd like you to help us understand the relationship between the two. Okay, so gender equity uh, intersects with tax equality. And uh, that is through, again, its tax policies and its administration. Uh, you mentioned uh, earlier about the informal sector. So most often when we look at uh, taxes, we're looking at the formal sector and we don't pay a lot of attention to the informal sector. But a lot of, if you look at from the African perspective, there's a lot of women that are uh, participating in the informal sector. You also mentioned, I think, uh, indirect taxes. Now, uh, as we know from a from a African perspective, there is still uh, the taxes that we collect. And if you look at the the Africa Tax Administration Forums uh, flagship publication, which is the Africa Tax Outlook you will see that there is still a disproportionate uh, collection in terms of between direct and indirect taxes, with indirect taxes being much more. And African countries uh, heavily rely on VAT, value-added tax. And uh, if again, if we bring it back to the uh, gender, uh, you, you would find that you know, the, the, those that are heavily affected are the lower income households and which is a lot of times also uh, women and uh, there is a lot of uh, you know single 
uh, family, uh, single heads in terms of households, and that are women in, on the continent. We saw with uh, COVID-19, the disparity that came in terms of uh, care, where women, you know, uh, held most of the uh, burden, and uh, and uh, you also have seen that, you know, in terms of uh, childcare as well, and that is where we need to find a balance in terms of looking at and developing tax policies that are promoting gender equality. Now, if you look at uh, many countries on the continent, uh, there is still a um, very little funding that goes towards programs that promote gender equality. And ATAF recently did a uh, research uh, as part of the ATAF Women in Tax Network, and we found that you know governments actually struggle to fund some of these uh, uh, the gender policies and to advocate for it. So what we need in order to get to more gender policies is we need political will. We have, uh, at an international level, we have the uh, sustainable development goals and, uh, you know, that advocates for gender equality. But we need that to be taken in at a national level so that we can develop these policies. Now, as okay. part of this research, there were also three countries that uh, are doing really well, and one of them is Rwanda. So, so when you talk about, you know, development of tax policy, and when you want to move towards a more gendered and equal, equal equality in terms of your tax policies, you need data, right? Absolutely. Now, if you look at the Rwanda example, Rwanda in 2021 has uh, developed uh, a, a gender strategy. And as part of this, they have... Uh, had some really great results, one of okay. them being a comprehensive gender disaggregated statistics. All right, uh, Varsha, I, I like how that you've been able to, you know, uh, show us the intersection between gender, uh, gender equity and tax equity. Now, talk to us, what initiatives, you know, are being undertaken to promote gender balance within African tax administrations? I know you were giving an example uh, before I bought in, but of course, uh, let's look at it holistically now. Okay, so so uh, a few things that needs to happen. The one is we need for, to advocate for gender, uh, you know, gender uh, gendered policies, and to do that, we need more women to be around the table when we're developing uh, tax policies, and uh, is that are part of the decision making. So, from a tax administration and a ministry of finance perspective, you need to bring more women that are part of this journey. And a good example was in South Africa, for example, as well as in Zimbabwe, where they've done that, as well as in Rwanda, where they've brought women uh, to be part of the decision-making process. The second is very important to make uh, decisions. You need uh, gendered uh, you need, you need uh, gender disaggregated data. So the statistics is really important. And as part of this, from a ATAF uh, perspective, we are looking at the collection of gender disaggregated data that will form part of the ATAF flagship publication, the after tax outlook. And uh, what, how, how we're going to do this is to look at the example, for example, uh, from Rwanda, where they've started to look at the individual taxpayers and All right, then Vasha. to broaden that. Thank you so much, Vasha Singh, for sharing your thoughts with us on the show today. Thank you very much for having me on the show today.